Okay, so we have some good announcements for this morning. Um, there's lots going on, so definitely check out your bulletin, but a few to highlight. There's the Ladies' Seminar, October 12th, um, Kingdom Culture, with speaker Dr. Melody Hilton. Um, for more information and sign-up sheet in the foyer, uh, I know from past experiences, they're always very fulfilling and very... Um, worship full time, so I recommend coming down. There's a corn maze hayride October 19th. More information and sign-up sheet in the foyer. Um, Samaritan's Purse shoebox dedication. So that will be Sunday, November 17th. Start bringing in your shoeboxes. Um, right over there we have some. I highly recommend it. Uh, last year, I had the opportunity to go down with uh, Holly Firm, and we went and actually helped look through and sort the pack, the boxes. So um, that in itself is a very meaningful experience, and the prayer that goes over those boxes. So I would highly consider, you know, recommend start collecting things now, flip flops while they're on sale and out, going out of season. Um, those types of things are very easy and very useful for the boxes. Um, at the end of the service, too, there will be a celebration meal following the service for the ordination and installation of Richard Gunn. So um, you don't need to bring food. Just come celebrate, okay, what, you know, the goodness that's happening. Um, so at this time, I'd like to have us all quiet down for some prayer, okay. I thank you, God, for the time that we have to come in your presence, Holy Spirit. I ask that you focus ourselves, focus our minds on you. Um, Holy Spirit, just be with us. Be with us as we worship you, as we come to listen to the words spoken today. Um, help it to speak to our hearts and our minds, Lord. I thank you for the blessings that you've given each of us. I thank you for being with us in the trials that we're facing daily, God, um, and that you give us each other to to bear the burden and to keep us strong and new courageous. So I ask Holy Spirit, you just continue to lead us, guide us, um, be with us today um, in your precious name. Amen. Good morning. morning. Can we all stand in honor of the word? We're in John today, John 15, 16. You didn't choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lovely fruit always, so that no matter what you ask from the Father, using my name, he will give it to you. Praise the Lord, a special promise. Can you say amen? amen? How many enjoy the Word of God? We're going to hear it preached later on, and so get ready for that. We have a special event that's taking place today along with the ordination of our brother Richard Gunn. And so we have a lot to look forward to. The Word will be preached later, so God is so good. Can you say amen? I tell you, in my spirit, the other day I felt the Lord... Let me know that he's going to send an explosion to this church. No, not a negative one, a positive one. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. So I, I want you to get ready, get ready. I want you to believe. Amen. Because God's going to do that for his glory. And I'm excited just thinking about it. I pray for you guys. And uh, I know that going to be a miracle in a man's life here because God told me that and uh, so I just believe God's going to do something awesome and so today here we are we've assembled together and what we want to do is invite the Holy Spirit to come I don't know about you no matter how many years I've served the Lord I need the Holy Spirit the moment I wake up till I go to bed we all need him. Can you say amen? Why? Because he's the helper. He helps us. Amen. Even though I, I, 
I know everything probably that you know about worship, but I know I can worship in the flesh or I can worship in the spirit. And so I need him to help me to worship in the spirit. Amen. That's where you need to ask him to help you. Hallelujah. So together now, we're going to invite him. Are you ready? Dear Spirit of God, come upon us. Heal. Set free. Deliver. Come now. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Glory to God. We love you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah.
You have loved this broken and damaged heart. You have loved me through my broken. I am healed. I am forgiven. All my chains are broken. Death has.
Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank him this morning for everything that has taken place during worship. I thank Pastor Johnny and the team, how God used them in a mighty and powerful way. At this time, we're going to do two things. We're going to pray for individuals that are in need. That's the first thing. The second thing is we're going to give. Let me tell you, this is a church of restoration. During the Middle Ages, the gospel light flickered and almost went out because the truth that used to be part of the early church vanished. But I thank God for Martin Luther. He was used of God to let us know that every believer is a priest. And since we're a priest this morning, because that truth has been restored to the body of Christ, we can pray for these needs, first of all. And then secondly, we can give. And how wonderful it is as a believer priest to do both, because that's the requirement of us. Can you say amen? I'm going to ask the ushers to come. Here are some people that you need to lift up in prayer. Now, when I give prayer requests, I'm trusting the Holy Spirit's going to speak to someone out there or maybe several for one particular prayer request, and you'll lead that before the Lord or bring it before him. I need to pray for Kevin this morning. His uh, sciatic nerve, he needs healing. He feels it in his back. He's going through that, so let's lift him up in prayer and just believe God for him. Can you say amen? We need to pray for Mary Dries this morning. Her knee needs healing. There's another issue that uh, you need to just lift before the Lord that she would like you to pray for her for help in that area. Carol Dries is heading, I think she said on Tuesday, but anyway, for a four to five hour time of uh, evaluation and so on lift her up in prayer and also we're believing for the complete healing of her body sue heitzelman or i mean heimbach we pray for the same thing for her need to be totally re restored and then we have cindy Dries, who's not with us this morning she has a spur in her in her foot and she's gone through a lot of pain she got a shot for it so Lift her up in prayer that God would just heal her and set her free. Kyle Dries, he needs deliverance. Let's lift him up for that. And then we need to pray for Denise. This would be the daughter of Leah. She has opportunity to get a good job with the government. So pray that she'll have favor. Let's just believe God for that. Can you say amen? Robin needs healing for her knee as well. So we're going to believe God for all of these particular needs. There's other needs that we could lift up today, but you know what they are. I'm going to ask one of these gentlemen if they'd lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, Papa, beloved, my Father, we cry out to you today, asking you, Father, to look down upon us with favor, with mercy, with grace, because you are the Father of miracles. You are the Father of healing. You are the Father of mercy and grace, who loves each and every one of us, Lord, so much that you gave your only begotten Son. separated from you, O oh Lord. But you never left him. Lord, and you raised him from the dead to bring victory for each and every one of us, O oh Lord. That's the gift that you gave to us, that you shed his blood. So, Father, we just plead that blood over each and every one of us, O oh Lord, for each and every need that was lifted up to you this morning, Father. The power that is in that blood. Hallelujah. Thank you, O oh Lord. You saved us all, O oh Lord. 
Thank you for your mercy, grace, your love. Oh, Father, we come before you, oh, Lord, giving back just a portion, oh, Father, of what you have blessed us with, oh, Lord. Lord, we ask you to take this, a gift that we give back unto you, oh, Lord, and multiply it for your kingdom. Use it for your will, oh, Lord. Use it to strengthen your kingdom and build up that upon this earth, oh, Father, to continue the victorious march that you have called each and every one of us to, oh, Lord. Lord, that we might give to you victorious. We might give to you hilariously, oh, Lord, out of our desires of our heart that we give unto you, Father, first and foremost, because we love you because you first loved us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Before we go any further, just bear with me. I feel that we need to bind something up in the name of Jesus. I bind up that spirit that comes against us on the platform. I bind you up right now. You are eternally defeated. You have no right to operate here. I render you inoperable. In the name of Jesus, be bound. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you for the victory of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for joining in. I'm going to call the elders and the pastors up at this time. As we indicated, we were going to ordain Richard Gunn today. I'm going to call them up first. By the way, uh, Tomas cannot be with us today, Tom Mundo. They made him work today. He wanted to be here with all of his heart. So that's just the way things go in society when you got a job, okay? So elders, pastors, will you join me up here? Praise God. Aren't these beautiful people? Some are still walking up. Some are here. Man, I, I tell you what. As a pastor, I'm so thankful for them. They're such a blessing to me. They encourage me. They've stood with me over the years, and I just praise God for that. Amen? Praise God. I'm going to ask that uh, Richard and Andrea and the family members, if they would come up here. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. We're glad to have Andre up here too, aren't we? Amen. I told you last week we were going to ordain Richard, and then there was going to be a special announcement. And by the way, the cat's out of the bag already, but anyway, we... The leadership of Brookside Ministries, after we have tried our best to hear the voice of God and be led by Him 
and through much prayer and even fasting over a long period of time, and you've joined in with us for that need, we have asked time and time again individuals that we have uh, thought maybe might fill the position of assistant pastor. But God really put all that on hold for a reason, because Richard was to be the assistant pastor. And so I'm really privileged, I believe the leadership would say the same thing, to have him come alongside me as assistant pastor. And so I'm going to read scripture, and then I'm going to combine the two, ordination and also installing him as assistant pastor slash evangelist. evangelist. How many heard that? All right. Oh, praise God. There's somebody right near the front row that's excited, okay? I'd like to read this passage of scripture. Would you stand, please? I want you to hear it very carefully. And Richard, this is for you especially, and Andrea. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Hear the word of the Lord. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. You may be seated. Richard, having been chosen by the Lord, and I believe way back in eternity past, he looked down, and by his foreknowledge, he saw you, and he chose you. He marked you out to be called by him, and certainly part of that calling will be here, which you've already been functioning. So having chosen been chosen by the Lord and that calling confirmed by the leadership of the church. Do you promise to serve this congregation faithfully and sacrificially according to the enabling grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit? I do. Having embraced the vision of Brookside Ministries Church, will you in accordance with this vision equip, teach, and release believers into ministry? I do. Will you minister to those you have been set over in the spirit of humility, and will you live the crucified life as an example? I do. Will you endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God? I do. Richard, having completed the requirements for ordination set forth in the official bylaws, of Brookside Ministries Church of Shemokin Dam, Pennsylvania, you are hereby ordained to preach and are installed as the assistant pastor slash evangelism. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Listen up now. The leadership's going to pray over Richard and, of course, pray over you, Andrea, as well, for the ordination part. And then we're going to have a prayer for him being installed, which is going to include anyone that wants to come up and lay hands on them. That will give you opportunity to be involved. So I ask the leadership to surround them as... And we're open to any gift of the spirit that might operate. In the oh yando sapo tata tate teto ho ri shi ki ki kano rupo shi ti 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 ha li hi li hi li ti 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 apo rata 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 rata. In Jesus' name, here he stands, Lord, a man of God, chosen by you way back in eternity past, and here he stands today. Father, we just set him aside. We set him apart. We set him apart by ordaining him in the name of the Lord Jesus. Just bless him, Father, in a mighty way. Endue him with a new impetus of your power in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let your gifts operate through him 
Help him, Lord, as he serves this congregation, to serve this congregation under a fresh and new anointing in the name of Jesus. And we believe you for it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Bless Andrea, Lord, as she has been called alongside of him. Strengthen her with might. Heal her body. Make her whole, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we're believing you for that. See, cool. La po, danda, la pa, pande. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And this is something that the Lord's put on my heart anyway. You come from Virginia, and you and I have talked about how the culture is different up north here, okay? and uh, how you've had to adjust to that, and God's helped you to do that. And what the Lord did, in my mind, he began to speak to me about the fact when Jesus came to the earth, the culture was a lot different than when he, he created it, okay? And so he had to adapt, and you've done that with God's help. And I, I just know it's a new day. It's a new day in your life, and in Andrea's life, and your family's life. And so I praise God for that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Oh, oh more. 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 In Jesus' name. More. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Oh, mighty God. We could do that for Hallelujah. installing you as assistant yes, pastor. Yes, okay. oh, yes. All right, I'm going to invite you up because oh, we're going to be praying over him Jesus. as we install him now as assistant pastor slash evangelist, okay? Hallelujah. Father God, I just lift up Richard oh, right now. God, mighty God, mighty I lift God. up your son to you not right now. In the name now. of Jesus. In the name of Yeshua Jesus. Jesus. I raise him up such Thank a time you, as this. Thank you, Jesus. That Thank Father, Jesus. today Jesus. is promotion day. Oh, yes, today is the day of the divine appointment. And, Father God, we thank you for his obedience. We thank you, Father God, for his faithfulness. Mm -hmm. But, yea, Father God, we also thank you for your now for this yes. man. For I hear heaven saying, right now, he's, God is pouring out divine fire on you. Divine fire! In the name of Jesus, let it come upon you. Let it come upon you. Let it come upon you. Thank you. Thank you. Let it come the Lord's calling you to a new dimension in the spirit. He's calling you to a place of fire and anointing and prophetic vision. Prophetic, woo, prophetic vision. Prophetic vision. He's calling you to see with the eyes of an evangelist prophetically. You will see people. If you'll see their hearts, God will show you their hearts. God has created you to be a warrior. Jesus. A prophetic word. <laughs> yes, Father, let it come upon him now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let him enter this new place in the spirit. Let him enter this place of fire in Jesus' name. Let him glorify you in this place. Let the fivefold arise in this place. Let it come, let it come, let it come. Let it come. And yea, Father God, even his wife, the two are made one. The two are one, Father God. Let them grow in places of the Spirit they've never been before. Yea, a day of new anointing, a new place in the Spirit, a new position in you. In the name of Yeshua Jesus. Amen. In the name of Yeshua Jesus. Pour upon them, Father God. Pour upon them. Lord, Father God, even their home, Father God. Anoint their home, Father God. I even see warning angels. You've got new angels. God's commissioned a new angel for you, Thank for you. both of you. Thank a new angel. Amen. Father God, let heaven protect these two, Amen. Father God. Let them, Father God, Lord, flow with your spirit as they've never had before. And Father, I'm even saying you think it's a big deal. You're a vice president of a supermarket. You haven't seen nothing yet. Oh. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yes, 
Amen. Amen. Father God, thank you, Lord. Praise, Praise God. God. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hold on here. I'm going to ask Richard to do something right now. We need a pastor of youth, and we've been searching for that person as well. Yes, Lord. I'm going to ask you, Richard, to lead us in prayer for that right now. Father God, as we come before you right now in the name of Jesus, knowing that you are a present help in a time of need, God. And God, you know the need of our youth, God. God, you know the leadership that this youth uh, group needs, God. And we pray right now, God, ever who that person is, God, that you're going to call and ordain here, God, for our, our children, God. I pray, God, you'd speak to them right now, God. God, that you'd remove all the distractions. and God, you'd remove all of the things, God, that may hinder them from here and from heaven, God. And speak to them today, God. Uh, God, that they may boldly approach, Lord, our pastor, and say, here am I, God, to sit me, Lord. Uh, oh, God, I ask you to right now, Jesus, to speak to them, Lord. Move up on. Oh, yes, God, this little family, God, that you're going to send this way, Lord. Uh, Lord, to watch over our little, our little sheep, God. I pray right now, Lord, for the lambs of this church, God. Uh, God, that you'd overshadow them with your protection, God. Uh, God, that you'd just surround them as a bubble, God, the holiness of God. Uh, God would watch out for our children, God. Uh, for we know these gifts and these callings, God, are for our children and for our children's children. Uh, for as many as the Lord thy God shall call. Uh, uh, call this youth leader right now, God, we ask you, Lord. Uh, you're on September the 15th. Uh, God, move today upon them, Lord. Lord, uh, we ask you it all and believe in Jesus, the way, the truth, and life, the Son of the living God. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We believe. We believe that we're going to gather up here in the near future to pray over a youth yes, pastor. Jesus. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Glory. Richard's also going to be preaching this morning, so he'll have to make this transition. <laughs> amen. Amen. And remember what was announced early on. We have a special meal for everybody. And you didn't have to bring anything. It was put on by the R&R. &R. Okay, that, that's Robin and Ron, or Ron and Robin, okay. And um, just it's, it's going to be a ham dinner, and boy, I can't wait. God bless. Praise the Lord. Will you stand as we welcome our guest speaker this morning? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Let's give the Lord Jesus a good hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord. We'll be going to the book of Matthew this morning, if you'd like to read along. If you put the per first slide, I'd appreciate it, brother. Praise the Lord. Certainly a great privilege to be here and stand before you this morning. Reminds me of a meeting in the back hills of Kentucky. We were there one night, and God spoke to the pastor, or the youth pastor of the church, to call this lady out that had a nurse uniform on and invited her up. And uh, God had laid on his heart to take the anointing oil and pour over her head and uh, ever what their need was. And she said, I can't do that because I'm going to work. And uh, he backed off, of course. And the service continued, and a little bit, she came up and opened her arms up, and she said, if you pour the oil on me, pour the whole bottle. Praise the Lord. She went out of there soaked with the, the anointing of God, filled to the brim with the Spirit of God. I don't know what all God done for her, but I've always uh, remembered that great move of God. That little church was a small church. And it literally was rocking on its foundation full of the Spirit of the Lord. So I've been very privileged over the years to uh, uh, be around great men of God like Brother Jerry, these elders in this church. And as you all know, we've been here a little over four years now. 
and it is a different culture here than it is down south, but I could not have moved to a better place than here in central Pennsylvania. Amen. The people here have been so good to us on our job, and especially here at the church, and we've got to know a lot of people throughout the area, and I am certainly privileged to stand before you today. Matthew chapter 25, all these words are written in red. As Jesus spake to his disciples, he said, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in, naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw thee, thee and hungered, and fed thee, or thirst, and gave thee drink? When saw we of the stranger, and took thee in, or neck, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, and as much as you've done it unto the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Would you stretch your hands this way? We're going to preach connecting people to Jesus. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, to move on us. God, to give us, uh, Lord, a word today to help this people, Lord. I surrender my, my whole being unto thee, my heart, my soul, my mind, my strength, Lord. Bless every individual here today, God. Speak to them. Lord, encourage them, Lord. Help us now preach this word, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you for this great privilege. And God, if it would be one you're lost today, we ask you, Jesus, to speak to their heart. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. As we look at the word of God here and uh, thinking upon this thought, the Lord has laid upon us getting people to Jesus. Amen. We take this work that God's laid out for each and every one of us here on how we want to go out to the world and evangelize the world or be that light as a city to set on the hill. And so many times uh, we limit God to the four walls of the church. Sometimes we limit God to the four walls of our home. Sometimes we limit God to just in our family, in our, in our spiritual family, or in our earthly family. Amen. But you know, church, as we look at Jesus Christ telling us when we stand before the King of Kings and the books are going to be open. Amen. He's going to look for our name inscribed in the Lamb's Book of Life. That book is Jesus Christ. Jesus will open the book, and I remember, amen, on September the 26th on, in 1992, about 915 p.m. PM. Amen. God spoke to my heart through a great message. Amen. From the Word of God and began to draw me and pull me in. Amen. To the altar of repentance. Uh, I look back those many years ago and say, what did I do? Amen. I done nothing, church. Um, amen. The Spirit of the Lord, amen, done all of the work for me. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord gave me the mind that I wanted to seek Jesus Christ. Um, the Spirit of the Lord dealt with me. Amen. And, let, and set me free for I knew I was a sinner I knew I was going to go to hell amen but I also knew I'd like to go to heaven one day and God opened that door that night amen and as God opened that door and began to welcome me in amen 28 years old full of sin amen never been saved before never been born again had 28 years of sin in my life amen but that night God called me into the altar amen and I got down and cried like a baby asking God to forgive me in church almost instantaneously. I, I felt the weight of sin, the weight of the world, the weight of the cares of the world. Amen. The weight of everything lift off of me. I, amen. And then God, amen, wants us to be about the Father's business. I, so what is our job as we go home? I, amen. As we go to our neighborhood, as we go down to the restaurant or into the grocery store, I, or everywhere we may go do our shopping at, what is our job? 
to do church, uh, if you've been introduced to Jesus Christ, uh, if your name is in the Lamb's book of life, uh, I got good news for you today. Uh, amen. You are equipped, amen, to go out to the lost to this world. Uh, you are equipped today to go out to the sick of this world. Uh, you are equipped today to go out to those that are hungry, uh, spiritually speaking or physically speaking. Uh, amen. Church, God has gave us a work to do. Uh, amen. God has gave us a mind of Christ to go to work for him. Uh, but sometimes we look through the obvious. We look past the obvious. Uh, this church will be filled to the brim uh, if you and I get busy for the Lord. Uh, if you and I will take these scriptures. By the way, church, uh, we're going to be judged on these scriptures one day. Uh, he's going to say one of two things to you and me. Uh, he's going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Uh, you've been faithful over a few things. Uh, or he's going to say, depart from me, uh, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. Uh, uh, church, I want to be able to stand in that great day of judgment. Uh, and Jesus looked down upon me. Uh, I can't wait to make eye contact to the Son of the living God. Uh, hallelujah. His eyes is a little flame of fire. Uh, his countenance shines brighter than the sun. Uh, amen. I can't wait to see the King of kings uh, and the Lord of lords. Uh, and he just gives me that look. Uh, uh, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Uh, but church, you and I are compelled. Uh, we, we should be going out to the highways and byways. Uh, amen. And compelling people to come into the house of God. Uh, amen. There's nothing wrong, church, uh, when we have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Uh, when we're led by the Spirit of God, uh, we need to be led by His Spirit, church. Uh, and when God calls that one out down at McDonald's uh, and puts that call in your life to say, can I pray for you? Uh, can I give you this track? Uh, amen. Would you come to church sometimes? Uh, a church we can storm through the gates of hell. Why? Jesus said he will build his church uh, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Uh, oh, we're part of the kingdom of God, church. Uh, we're part of the army of God. Uh, we got all the power and the anointing we need to, to uh, a church to go out and help the needy. Uh, do you know of anybody today? Uh, hey, praise the Lord that are hungry spiritually speaking, uh, are hungry physically speaking. Uh, our job, church, is to go to that one. Uh, uh, go to that young person. Go to that middle age. Go to that older one. Uh, amen. And you know what we've got to do, church? Uh, we've got to give them the gospel. What is the gospel? The good news. Uh, do you know I know a man named Jesus? Uh, he is the son of the living God. Uh, he still has all power in heaven and in earth. Uh, he heals, amen, the blind. Uh, he, he makes the deaf speak again. Uh, he makes the lame walk again. Uh, he heals the most filthy of sinners. Uh, he washes them with his red blood, uh, and they come out whiter than snow. Uh, church, we've got so much good news uh, we can share with this world. Give him a good hand clap of praise. Me and, me and David were talking one day, and we were talking about the brand that people put on themselves. And uh, some people say they're Baptists. Some people say they're Presbyterian. Some people say they're Catholic. Some people call them charismatic. Some people are Pentecostal. We all got this title. But I told him, I said, how cool would it be, David, if we were just known as Christians? Hallelujah. If we were just known as Christians, if that's the doctrine we preached... It tears down almost every denominational wall that the devil's built among us and among our families. We're not trying to be people to say, you need to stop believing this way and believing that way. We're Christians. We're Christ-like. We believe in the Son of the living God. We believe in a man seated on the right hand of God Almighty. The man that came to the earth and lived about 33 and a half years. He allowed sinful man to nail him to the rugged cross. And he bore all of our sins, church. Amen. We've got so many good things to tell people. If people are down and out, we've got somebody we can pray to go to them. We've got the Holy Ghost. We've got the Spirit of God. 
God that will go make that visitation. I've got a daughter who lives down in Virginia right on the Tennessee line. I can't get down and see Casey like I'd like to. Oh, but I know somebody's down there with her. He watches over her day and night. He protects my babies down there. She's got two beautiful daughters, and they're out down there by themselves. Oh, no, they're not by themselves. They've got the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They've got the angels encamped around about them who love the Lord. Do you love the Lord today? You've got angels encamped around about you today, church. We've got an angel on our side. One can put a thousand to flight. Two can put ten thousand to flight. It don't matter how many you need today. It don't matter how many your family needs today. God's got an army full of angels, church, that'll hold back the enemy and set us free. For in Jesus we've been set free. Give him a good hand clap of praise. Next slide. There's three thoughts here with you. We got to take it to the street. The apostles, after the day of Pentecost, they were filled with the Spirit of God. Peter stood up with the eleven and preached a sermon, and thousands of people were saved. It wasn't Peter Church, he was just like you and I, you and I, just a common man with a common education, a fisherman by trade. But he knew how to go fishing, church. I've heard it said many a time from my forefathers, let's just go fishing and let God clean the fish. Amen, that's just as true here today as it was 50 years ago or 100 years ago, church. God has straightened me out. If you know something's amiss in my life, would you please pray for me? You don't have to get on the phone. You don't have to text. You don't have to email. Just call on Jesus church and he'll work on you and me our job is look up amen look to Jesus as the way the truth and the life as the example of our life but church we've got to take it to the street amen sometimes it's just a shake hand sometimes amen it's just a smile sometimes it's just do you know Jesus loves you sometimes they call it paying forward as God speaks to you I always do ask how much it is by the way but maybe that car behind you Amen, amen. It may, they may be down there last five bucks. Uh, and God speaks to you and says, pay for that one behind you. Uh, I always tell the cashier, tell them Jesus loves them. Praise the Lord. Uh, church, there's all kinds of little things we can do, but it takes us taking it to the street. There's a place called Bethesda. And there was a little man that laid there for 38 years waiting for the moving of the water. For at a certain season and a certain time, the angel of the Lord would come down and trouble that water. And as the water was troubled, the first one that got into the water, no matter what was wrong with them, leprosy was an incurable disease. Of course, blindness and death and lame, they all was incurable. But the first one to get in that water, ever what condition they had, was made whole. Amen. Jesus came by the pool of Bethesda. He saw this man there. Amen, church. He didn't have to wait for the moving of the water, for he's the one who sends the angels to trouble. Him. Amen. He just rested down and touched that man, and he was made whole. Peter and John, after the day of Pentecost, they were going down to the temple for the hour of prayer. And along the way, there was a little beggar down there asking for alms or asking for money. I like what Peter and John said. A shivering gold have I none, but such as I have. Give I thee in the name of Jesus arise. That man jumped to his feet immediately, church, and he ran and leaped down to the church. Can you imagine what would happen in those doors if you and I were out doing the Father's business? Not for glory, not for fame, not for money, not for a name, but going out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Doing the great works of God and say, come down and testify what God's done for you. And we were all out doing our thing for Jesus. Taking it to the street, praise the Lord. Brother Paul was telling me as he drives one of them big tractor and trailers that I love. Uh, amen. And he goes into the back of one of the grocery stores uh, and there was a bunch of ladies there in a circle of prayer. Uh, amen. And they looked at him and uh, they were praying and I'm sure they were a little frightful this six foot five man. Uh, but old Paul, all he did was slide his sleeve up. Uh, and you know what on his arm it says? Uh, uh, sanctified. Uh, hallelujah. You know what them sisters did? Uh, they opened the circle and invited him in. Uh, I'm glad that I've been saved 
sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost today, church, all through and by Jesus. Takes us taking it to the street. Don't, don't hold my tie against me. I've been to churches before. Me and Andre traveled about a few years, and I learned their dress code. And there's places I needed to wear a tie. There's places I need to wear a shirt without a collar. There was places I need to be completely shaven. There was places that I'd get a real trim haircut. But you know, church, I didn't let any of that bother me, for I read the Apostle Paul. Hallelujah. He wrote around 99 chapters of the New Testament. This man knows what he's doing. He went out, amen, with the good news of Jesus Christ. He said when he was down in Rome, he, wore, he acted like the Romans. When he went here or there, amen, he was with them. He fit in with them. Amen. But church, no matter what we got to do when we go out to the street, we ought to try to fit in with with them. Amen. Our, our message today, church, is Jesus and him crucified. And there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. There's no Buddha. There's no Muhammad. But you know what Jesus can do to those uh, religious people? He can set them free. He can give them life. And he can give them life abundantly, praise the Lord. He takes all the murder. He takes all the envy and all the strife away from his church. But it takes us taking it to the street, praise the Lord. Lord, Jesus to speak to us. We are to be instant in season. As Pastor quoted uh, Timothy, Sister right back here, would you stand up, please, if, if you'd allow us. So God spoke to me. Would you just stretch your hands this way? She, she needs something really urgent in her life. I believe that. Let's pray to her. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, Oh, God, you know this need today, God. This urgent need, God. Oh, yes, Jesus. Thank you, Sister Lisa. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, ever what this need may be, God, would you open the windows of heaven, God, and to share her with this need, God, to share her with a blessing, God, that there would be room enough not to contain, heap down, bubbling over, God, would you just move today, God? Yes, God, touch this family, God. Move in a mighty way today, God. Here on Sunday morning, Jesus, we know you can supply the needs, God, according to your riches and glory. Uh, church, how many of you believe today, God's going to give her that. Would you give the Lord a good hand clap of praise? Praise the Lord. But church, we can be instant, in season. How much better would our life be? I believe she's encouraged that God spoke to me to pray for her. I didn't call out what God told me that she needed. That's her business and, the, and her family's business. Amen. Sometimes it's just between us and God. God knows our needs, church. Sometimes God wants us to call it out. Man, that's confirmation when God speaks to you. And, and you confirm, amen, what you already know. Praise the Lord. But church, we need to be instant in season. We need to reprove and rebuke and exhort. I like that part better than I do the reproving and the rebuking. I don't like doing that. I'll say that's the pastor's job. Praise the Lord. But amen, we can exhort. Sometimes, old church, a little reproving is what we need. But as we go out to the world, church, our, our message is the goodness of God, the good news of Jesus Christ. He, he can supply you every need. He is supplied according to his riches and glory. My little brother, amen, at the age of 19, and my big brother now, he's my younger brother. Hey, my, my, my brother Michael took a 410 shotgun, put it under his chin, and pulled the trigger. Most of you have heard this story. Hey, man, my mom and dad had been faithful to God for years upon years upon years. Mom says when she took me to church as a newborn baby, like two or three days old, it slapped me under the seat. Hey, man, and I sit there and sleep in, in, a, in a Holy Ghost-filled atmosphere. I was born in 1964. Some of you all can remember the 50s and 60s and 70s, the outpouring, the revival that swept through the world. Some classics are on TV. It amazes me how our forefathers went to different places of the world, including the United States of America, and, and people by the thousands flocked to them. God's still doing that today, church. God is still on the throne today. There's ministries today that's touching this world like it's never touched before. I don't have my phone today, church, but we need to get people connected to Jesus. Uh, amen. That, that scene there, those little circles, our job is not to connect people. 
people, church. It's to get them, amen, looking to Jesus. Uh, amen. And when I was born again, I didn't go to a pink room or a blue room or a yellow room. I knew I'd been born again. I knew I'd been set free. Now, I was hungry, amen, to know what I needed to do. They told me, you need to be baptized. Baptism won't save you, but you need to be baptized in water. Amen. And I read in Matthew 28, I read in Max 2.38, I read, amen, that we need to be baptized. So I was going, preacher, can I be baptized? Now, it was in October. About 15 of us were saved in this revival all around my age. Hey, man, we waded out in the old Powell River. Man, that water was cold. I still remember, and I waded out. And nobody could see my face, and I'm going like, oh, my gosh, and it took my breath. Hey, man, but you know, the further I waded out in that water, and they got me out about right here. Hey, man, I felt the warmth of the Spirit of God. As I turned around to a massive crowd on the old riverbank, hey, man, I felt the presence of God. That old preacher raised his hand toward heaven. Hallelujah. And he said, in the name of Jesus, I, I baptize this, my brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And they put me down, church, in that old cold water. Hey, man, but I come out, amen, on fire for God. I felt the warmth of God. Why? Some Somebody was in season, church, and reach out to me. You know, I went to that little church. The night I got saved, I was on my house putting a, a shingle roof on. And the old boy was helping me put them on there, and there was a storm coming. We was filling the sprinkles. And we had to hurry. And his name was Joe Young. And the preacher pulls up in the driveway of my house. I lived there all my life. And at the age of 28, is the first visitation of a real preacher. There had been some other denominations come knocking on my door, but the real preacher, p pastor of God come. And I was up there on the, on the, of my house and the eve of my house. And Joe says, you ain't getting down, are you? We ain't got time for this. Because he worked me like a dog, even though I was paying him. And I said, Joe, this is the first time a preacher's ever come to my house. And I got down off the ladder and went over to see him. His name was Brother Jimmy Ewing one of the greatest men of God I've ever knew. He's a preaching machine. I admire him so much. He can preach. He can just, just preach. preach for, he preached for an hour all the time or longer. And, uh, man, I, I mean, you're talking about just filling your soul full, when you're, especially when you're a new convert, and a lot of stuff in the Bible is the first time you've ever heard it preached under the anointing. But he asked me, he said, well, Brother Richard, he said, if you ever want to come to church, we'd like to invite you up to call Puckett's Creek. He said, we'd like to invite you up to Puckett's Creek. I said, I appreciate you coming by. He said, now, we've been praying for you. And he got in his car and went down the road, and I crawled back up on the ladder. Man, it took two minutes. And brother, my brother Joe said, who was that? And I said, well, that was a, that was a preacher up there where mom and dad goes to church every once in a while. He come to invite me into church. And I looked over at Joe. I said, if I ever go, I know where I'm going. That's where I went. Because somebody spoke to his ear in season, and he acted upon that. Church, we got to take it to the street. Hey, Amen. we have to have compassion for the loss. No matter what kind of mess they've made in their life. No, church, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Some's publicly, some's private. Some of you's kept it pretty concealed. Boy, I have. I mean, there's sins that we've thought about. Jesus said as he talked about adultery, he said, if you even look up on a woman, or it could be a man, now either way, ladies. But if you look upon a woman in lust after, you've already committed adultery in your heart. Jesus stops the act of sin, church, right in his tracks if we will let the word of God be activated. But we got to be compassionate no matter what kind of mess they're in. No matter how deep in sin they've been in, they've been out. They come in for a month or two, then you don't see them for a year. You come back in, and I, I used to get so aggravated as a young, dumb Christian. As people come in and they sort of wanted to take over. Pastor just let them do what they wanted to do. And then they'd be, about a month later, something happened and they, they wouldn't see them for six or seven weeks. And then you'd hear something on them. And then they'd come back to church, Pastor would run to them. And I'm going like, come on, Pastor, in my mind. But now you know what I realized that Pastor was full of? Love. Full of mercy and full of grace. Church, as we go out to the street, we need to be compassionate for the lost. What do they need from Jesus Christ? The same thing you and I need. They need grace. They need mercy. What's grace? Unmerited, undeserving favor. 
We need the grace of God. We need the mercies of God. So as we go out to the street, we've got to be compassionate for the lost un under any circumstance. I've told people in my family, I have learned unconditional love. And I have. I can stand here behind this pulpit today with this Bible stretched in front of me compared to where I used to be to where I'm at now. Man, I love people today unconditional. They didn't earn it. They've not deserved it. But God flipped the switch in my heart, and I love them unconditional now. I seen an old boy the other day walking while I was down in Virginia, and, man, he's so far out. He smoked so much weed and drank so much liquor and, and consumed so much alcohol. Man, he, he's just a zombie. He's a pothead. And I see him walking down the road. Ain't got a family. Don't have a wife. Don't have children. Don't have a grandchildren. Mine was standing there on the porch, and I looked up, and we were friends, and I could have went down that path. I could have been walking down the road with him without nothing in his life. You know what God spoke to me do? His name is Junior Freeman. He said, go out and give him a big old hug and tell him you love him. Hey, man, I got to where he was. My mom told me who he was. I got real, a nose to nose with him and still wasn't for sure if it was the man I used to know. Sin has ravaged his body and ravaged his mind. But I was able to testify about how God has been good to me and for him not to forget it was never too late that he could get born again, he could get saved by the grace of God. That Jesus still had his arms outreach and saying, come unto me. Tears come down his eye, and he said, I really appreciate that, Richard. It's really good to see you. But see, church, I could be in my judgmental seat today and say he deserves what he's getting. He knew better than that. He was raised in that little hole in this church. But church, something bubbled up in me beside, outside of myself, out on the street, literally on the road, and we can reach out with compassion. I'm not the example today, by the way. I get too busy, and I walk by too many opportunities. I've got them all around me by the hundreds if I just give God the year to year what the Spirit is telling me. Just that small, still voice that we can whisper to somebody sometime. I love you. <laughs> I love you. That's all it takes sometimes. I've told you the story about my wife. She's a beautiful woman. I look in the mirror, and I've always been honest with myself. But when I got Andre, I had to really work hard. I'm not, I'm David, anybody like you, you know. I mean, Andre is absolutely gorgeous. But I tell you what, one or over, Pastor, this simple words, hello, darling. <laughs> See, I, God, God knew that it would be over 30 years later, and I'd be standing here in front of you folks in Pennsylvania, and see, you always remember that about me and Andre now, that Richard won her over with, hello, darling. And I finally worked on her long enough that she fell in love with me, looked past my failures and shortages and all that stuff, and we, we've been in love. She's my high school sweetheart. We've had her ups and downs. Man, the devil stood no to nose with us. He's fought my family, my dad, my mom, my brothers, my sister. He's fought our family. But you know what, church, I can stand here today. By the grace of God, we are here today on our feet standing for the Lord. Praise the Lord. Last point here. It's 11.59, so this is going to be quick. I know you get hungry at 12 o'clock. Focus on the gospel. The gospel, church, is this Bible right here. I know there's a lot of really great programs and a lot of great things that we can do to help each other. And man, I absorb them and take them all in. But it should never replace the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E. Yeah, that's the book for me. There's so many great stories and actual events in this Bible. If we will allow the teacher to teach us, and if we will allow the share, which is the Holy Ghost, to sh let us share those things in the Bible that's relevant to our families and our friends and places at work and as a church, God will speak to our hearts, church. But we need to be focused on the good news. Focus on the gospel. Focus on this man called Jesus Christ. I always think about, I see these men back here drive these tractor and trailers. I, I, you know the reason I, I love these tractor and trailers? Man, they got a whole load of stuff. They got 22 pallets of stuff that we got from maybe a thousand different places up, up, up the road here in Milton, all over the world. And it comes into that distribution system up there. 
And these guys back in and get a big old tractor and trailer load of it, and they drive for three or four hours in each direction sometimes. Every time I see a tractor and trailer, sister, I always think, God, let me have a load of the gospel. Let me have, God, the word of God that, that you can go out and feed the hungry. You can go out, God, and give the people a thirst, amen, a drink. Amen. And would you look up and down the roads and see ever what brand of, of, of supermarket or, or grocery store or what it would be or, or super center? When you see that, there's clothes in some of those. There's food in a lot of those. There's tools in a lot of that. Hey, man, but I like to have a whole tractor and trailer load of the gospel of Jesus Christ, church. Hey, man, it's up to you and I to seek out those ways that God can use us, amen, reaching, amen, getting people to Jesus Christ. We need to get people to Jesus, church. You can't save them. I can't save them. But we know who can. We can forgive them, but they need to be forgiven of Jesus Christ if we can just get them to Jesus. If we can just get them to look up sometimes. Just look up. We watched a movie last night there at the house. Where if y'all have not saw this, man, it, I, I cried like a baby four or five times. I was trying to hide it from Andrea. She likes them drama movies, and I go, oh, my God. But we're, we're watching that movie where that little boy fell through the ice. Man, you're talking about feeling God all through that. It's real, 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 real Vince. And the gentleman that rescued him and got down in the water was an atheist. <laughs> Woo! God spoke to an atheist, and the atheist obeyed God. Ain't that good? He thought his boss was hollering at him. But it was God speaking to him. Church, my point is, let's allow God to do his work. His amazing grace, his amazing forgiveness. If everybody stand today, we appreciate it a whole, a whole bunch just allowing us the privilege to minister to you. We promise as we did before a pastor. I got his back, and amen, this, this group of elders has been here for a long time. I'm so privileged to stand with them to support them. Humbly bowing before you guys as a servant. But if you're here today and you've never knew this man called Jesus, man, you don't know what you're missing. You could be the key to seeing your whole family saved. My brother Michael got shot. His eyes were gone. His tongue was gone. Buckshot was filled through his brain. And he was not going to live. But last night, about 9.30, I called him. He wished me a happy birthday yesterday. I missed his call and called him. But many, many, that's 1990. Michael's still seeing today. God give him two new eyes. His tongue was so long, he shot off half of it, and it still rolled out, and he's got a normal-sized tongue, while I tell him. But he's talking today, thinking today, married today. Has Michael been perfect since God healed him? Nope. Guess what Michael was when God healed him? When God put eyes and a tongue and a brain and a mind and healed him, Michael was a sinner. Michael was drunk. He had been drinking wild turkey. Any of y'all's ever drunk liquor and drunk wild turkey? You know it don't take much of it. And he had drunk a lot of it. And the devil came in in a state of depression and said, end it all. But God came by, church, and restored him. As, as our pastor said, this is a church of restoration. I physically saw that. Sort of believed in miracles, but I was lost. But right in front of my eyes, God put eyes, a tongue, closed up a big hole in the roof of his mouth one night instantly where he'd shattered the top of his roof. My point, church, no matter what you need today, physically, financially, or if you just need this salvation, what the greatest miracle of all is to get your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Come while you can. If you're here and you've grown cold on God or you're in a backslidden condition, <laughs> it's so easy. To come to Jesus. It's so easy to get forgiveness because he's already done the work. He's just saying, allow me to wash away your every sin. Allow me to cleanse you with my own blood. Allow me, amen, to do all the work that needs to be done in your life. If you're here today and you need to be healed, we can't heal you, but we know who can. He done bore the stripes on his back. If you're here today and you need to be healed, we'll anoint you at all. 
we're expecting God. He said, to, you know, if there's any sick among you, James chapter 5, verse 13, any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. And then our job, church, is to pray over you and anoint you in the name of Jesus. He said, you shall be healed, and he throws in, and you shall be forgiven, be saved. God has got a storehouse full of goodness for us. So if you're here today, would you please come and pray? Would you please come and allow God to move up on you? God knows what this little family needs over here, beautiful little girl. Let's stretch our hands this way, church, and pray for her needs. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, meet and supply this need, God, according to your riches and glory. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As Brother Tom was praying for me earlier today and asked God to put a fire, I saw that fire today, church, in my spirit. I'm not one to put on, but I, the, the, it, it just brightened up my eyes as tight as I could get them. And it wasn't the camera flashing. That's the first thing the devil told me. I closed my eyes and I felt the fire of God has been kindled in my spirit. I want to see the fire of God kindled in every spirit in here to, today and moving forward. Anybody here needs to be pray, needs to pray? Anybody need to come and just ask the Lord to forgive me? Hallelujah. See, the devil wants us to come in here guilt, guilty and leave here guilty. God wants us to come in here if we messed up, guilty, and leave here forgiven. Set free. <laughs> Ain't a better feeling to be set free. Man, I mess up all the time. I don't do it deliberately. I'm not planning on it. I'm going to sin and go get forgiveness. But I mess up, church. We all do. I found Jesus to always be faithful and just. All he wants me to do is pray. If you're here today and you need to pray, would you come and pray? Just come and pray. See, my job is to get you connected to Jesus. And all I can do is brag about Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got three over here praying. Y'all either come and pray or stretch your hands this way. Mighty God. Anybody need to come and pray today? I love it. And I see the warriors come in for the soldiers. When you're out on the battlefield, church, the devil's throwing all his fiery darts he can at you. You ever had any fiery darts land? Man, I have. Hallelujah. Sometimes they penetrate and they hurt. In other words, you mess up. You don't respond right. Jesus is faithful and just to forgive. He's done paid the price no matter what. No matter what you have done, church, he wants to erase it. As a little boy, we used to have to get up and, and wash the, the chalkboard. You, you, anybody remember that? Um, some of the generation don't know what a chalkboard is now, I guess. With technology, we're connected 24-7. But I remember no, no chalkboard would be all messed up, Brother Tom. It'd be all chalky. Teacher had been, been teaching on it for maybe a week or two and I was always amazed when it got washed and it was just really black Jesus is reverse of that he'll take all the tarnishes in our life and he'll wash us and he'll make us whiter than snow every spot every wrinkle every blemish or any such thing will be removed from our life if we just allow Jesus to do that for us hallelujah our sister's got a test tomorrow I told her we was going to pray for her tomorrow. Got the white sweater on. Y'all stretch your hand this way. I, 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 let's pray for good news tomorrow, church. All is well tomorrow. All is well. Father, right now in Jesus' name, Lord, I think she says about four hour test tomorrow. Give her the strength, God, to go through it. And I pray, God, that every one of them, every one of them, God, that she would be come back, Lord, that all A double L all is well and strengthen her God continue God to strengthen her and heal her Lord shine that light as a city set on a hill on our sister Lord I know she brags on the Lord all the time and how good he's been 
Keep your hand on her tomorrow in Jesus' name. Church said amen. amen. Anybody else need to come and pray? There's still time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.